Hey guys, today we're gonna make roti. Um, it's a well-known Surinamese Indian dish. Uh, I have the master of roti right here with me. Mama, come quick, come quick. I love her. I grew up eating her roti and it's delicious. Lots of you guys been asking me to make a recipe video for roti and finally after five million years, <laughs> I'm gonna make it. So you can eat curry vegetarian style, so curry potato and long beans, which I'm also going to do a recipe about. You can eat it with curry chicken, which I already have a recipe of. Check out my videos. And you could eat it with curry lamb, curry duck, curry anything, and um, sure. however you like it. So follow these steps. Make sure you knead it good. Make sure you stamp it good, mash it good, whatever. Yeah, follow these steps and uh, enjoy. So for the filling, I used nine potatoes. You're gonna cut it in such pieces. And then you're gonna bring to a boil with salt. So salt, water, potato, nine potatoes, cut into pieces. You boil it until it's soft. Not too soft or else your roti can easily tear. Um, I used four tablespoons of cumin powder and five garlic cloves chopped. Optional is pepper. So add your garlic and your cumin powder and then you mash it up. <laughs> so after mashing it like the way it is, no lumps, no whole potatoes, you're gonna put it aside to cool down. So for the roti dough, what you are going to need is water, you're going to need 2 tablespoons of baking powder, 1 kilo of flour, and about 3 tablespoons of oil for the smoothness, for the moisture of it. And you mix the dry ingredients first. Then you're going to add your water bit by bit. Now you're going to add your 3 tablespoons of oil. And then you're going to knead it again. So after tons of kneading, you're gonna put your finger in it and what you wanna see is make sure that it can go down and stay down. And then you cover it and set aside for an hour so it can rise. And then you're gonna notice how nice and soft it is. You will need some space on the counter and what you're gonna do is wipe this good and then flour it up. So what you're going to do now is make some balls from the roti dough. Out of this one kilo we usually make about 15. You're going to put some flour to the dough, form it into a ball. So now for the filling process, you're going to take your roti ball, flatten it with three, four fingers on top of a um, flower and then you're going to open it wider by moving your fingers around it and then you're going to hold it in your palms and then you're going to add about like a handful of potato. Try to squeeze this into the roti as much as possible possible without rupturing it. Now you're gonna gently close the roti by rolling it and pushing the edges together as it becomes 
one and this is how it looks and then you're gonna set this aside don't forget to put it a little in the in the flower and then you repeat this process so once more you flatten the roti ball on some flour with three four fingers then you broaden it so you stretch it out by rolling it in your hand you fill the roti with about one handful push it in gently and close it using the edges of the roti pulling it together and rolling it with the other hand You need a roll pin, extra flour because when you're rolling the roti you, you don't want it to stick on the counter so you need to add your flour in order for it not to stick. What you're going to need is a roti pan which is what we have here. A lot of people don't have this in their home. I'm lucky to have one. But what you can use is a frying pan but then the, your roti is going to be extra small so the size of the roti that you saw is usually as big as the roti pan here but frying pan is smaller so then you have to probably use half of the roti ball and then you're gonna need a bowl with oil that's for frying make sure you have a spoon in it so you can add it to the roti when frying and you're gonna need a bowl a bigger bowl to put in the fried roti and you're gonna need a spatula to turn it and to take it out so like I said you want to add flour to your counter in order for the roti not to stick so what you're gonna do is make it really round and tall and then you flatten this with the palm of your hand you turn it over and you flatten the edges and you kind of stretch it out while doing so and then you repeat this process remove the excess flour and then you're gonna start rolling Make sure roll from one side to the other side so that the whole roti gets rolled. <laughs> when rolling you want to sometimes flip it around, rotate it, whatever in order for all the edges to be on the same level. And make sure roll carefully because it can rupture really quickly. This is how big we're gonna do our roti. And then you can put it in a frying pan or on the roti pan. Okay, so now you're gonna add your roti to the roti pan. Place it good on the pan so it doesn't fall off. As you can see, this roti is really big. And then what you're going to do is on medium heat, make sure it's always on medium heat, wait until the bottom is a little crisp, so a little warmed up. You'll notice it when it turns a little hard and crunchy. You can turn it around. As you can see, the professional turn it around, but you use your spatula to do so. And then you're going to add a little bit of oil for the edges and then also for the center. And then you're going to spread it out with the spoon. And then you're going to flip it over to the other side so you can also add oil on this side. Add oil to the edges as well and the center. Make sure it gets the whole roti. While doing so, the bottom is actually frying up nice and brown. Using your spatula, you're gonna try to flatten the edges because this should be nice and soft. If you don't flatten the edges, what happens is the edges get really hard.
once you start seeing brown dots, brown edges, brown stuff, <laughs> that means uh, the roti is ready to take out. You're gonna half it with your spatula and kind of fold it in four. So in half and then in half again. And then you put it in your bowl. 